Let's now speak to uh, political analyst Sabah Jawad, who is uh, joining me from London. Uh, Mr. Jawad, um, two months into the US-led uh, uh, air campaign uh, in Iraq, has it done anything to stop the militant advance? Uh, by the look of it, actually, in Iraq and Syria and elsewhere in the Middle East, whether it's Libya or Yemen, they haven't done uh, anything, uh, um, you know, to, to indicate uh, the correctness of what, is, what they say they're going to do. Uh, in fact, since they moved in in Iraq, we see uh, hardly any kind of uh, action or effect action against the IS, uh, IS, IS terrorist groups. And uh, they are... Uh, you know, they're attacking new attacks in, in, near Baghdad and Ramadi in particular in the past few days, mm -hmm. as well as the terrorist atrocities in Diyala, Kadhumi and Shu'la area. So, you know, they, because mm -hmm. uh, the, the air campaign by the United States and uh, so-called allies against uh, terrorism, which, by the way, they are the forces who supported terrorism for the past uh, 13, 14 years, and for the past three and a half years in Syria. Um, they've been very ineffective, and I think uh, the whole saga indicate actually that the United States want the situation to happen uh, in Iraq and Syria and the Middle East, so they could intervene and they could go back to Iraq after we had to withdraw in 2011 and build a new military base and uh, you know finish the, uh, the business that they started in Iraq but they were unable to finish uh, between 2003 and 2011 when they had to withdraw because of the resistance of the Iraqi people and the refusal uh, to allow them uh, new military bases and uh, military presence in Iraq uh, in 2011, in, after 2011. The American uh, uses the pretext of uh, Daesh occupation of uh, Mosul to go back and to establish two base, military bases, and they have uh, more than 1,600 troops uh, disguised as advisors in Iraq, and they're going to do some sinister plans uh, for Iraq, dividing Ira Iraq. Not only that, but I mean, they're they paving the way for a continuous civil war in Iraq. You know, they are trying to create so-called um, uh, national guards in province in Iraq, that's been every province in Iraq, the 18 provinces, will have 18 different armies based on sectarian recruitments and so on. And this is a recipe for disaster for the future of Iraq as a unified state. Uh, so the Americans are there to utilize the situation. And in the same way, what's happening in Ain al-Arab as well is very indicative or what the Americans and the Turkish part of their Turkish... All right, uh, Mr. Jawad, I'd like to cross over to the U.S. and uh, bring in Abbas uh, Kadhim into the discussion. He's a senior foreign policy fellow at John Hopkins University. Uh, Mr. Kadhim, are these U.S. airstrikes alone ineffective in defeating IS, or is the anti-ISIS coalition intentionally making little effort to defeat them? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, so far, uh, the facts on the ground prove that uh, the airstrikes aren't enough, and we thought all along uh, that this strategy, relying on airstrikes alone, is not going to do much uh, in order to defeat a group, a uh, determined group of terrorists like ISIS. Uh, there must be more than just airstrikes. It has to be a comprehensive uh, plan uh, a comprehensive strategy that would involve very capable um, uh, ground troops with superior uh, kind of equipment and armament in order to defeat uh, the group. Also, uh, it has to uh, be involving also the other elements uh, of uh, drying their um, financial sources and, and others. Yes, um, are these latest advances by IS in Ambar a result of the lack of coordination between Baghdad and the US-led coalition? Uh, it might be, um, uh, but again, uh, there is, uh, w what coordination are you going to expect from Baghdad if what we have is really a, a command center that is outside uh, of Iraq that uh, uh, uses uh, air force alone? 
Um, so uh, I don't think that Baghdad has much um, uh, to contribute uh, to this kind of uh, of, of uh, war. Uh, also, we have to remember that there are two strategies. ISIS in Syria uh, is faced with a different strategy than ISIS uh, in Iraq, and that confuses the situation a bit. And uh, there is a, a heavy involvement in combating ISIS in Iraq, but in fact, in Syria, it doesn't seem uh, clear where the, the strategy is uh, by helping ISIS, so-called ISIS opponents, uh, and who are also the opponents of, of the Assad regime, it seems that ISIS is getting the upper hand uh, at the end. So we need a unified strategy for ISIS in Syria and in Iraq. And as I said, it has to be more serious uh, than what we have seen so far. Yes, but the Iraqi army, along with the tribesmen, volunteers and the Kurdish Peshmerga forces, have been able to gain some ground in the last two weeks. They have in areas where they are welcomed. Uh, let's face it, that most of the uh, places where ISIS is very strong and is op uh, operating with impunity, that is the Sunni uh, governorates, let's name things with their own names, uh, the, the militias uh, who are, in fact, working with the Iraqi government right now uh, and the Iraqi uh, forces, that's the Iraqi military, are not welcomed and they are, if anything, uh, uh, they are being fought by the uh, tribes and many of the residents uh, of, of those areas. Yes, there are some tribes that are supportive of the government and the military, but their uh, influence is not that great. Uh, in fact, uh, what we have seen so far is that the residents of the area uh, of the Sunni governorates have been ISIS's uh, greatest uh, allies so far. Uh, Mr. Jawad, I'd like to go back to you. How do you comment on that? Uh, do you think that Baghdad isn't contributing enough to the fight against IS? Well, it's funny coming, this, these kind of things are coming from the American because the American refused to give, to arm the Iraqi government and the Iraqi army for, uh, uh, you know, since they signed so many agreements with the Iraqi government to supply phantom jets and uh, other type of weaponries. Uh, they didn't want to uh, provide Baghdad with these weaponries because the Kurdish region uh, was lobbying against it because Turkey doesn't agree with it, because Saudi Arabia was lobbying against it, and Israel was lobbying against it. Uh, and now they're saying the Iraqi government is not really capable. I know there is a lot of corruptions and misdeeds by the Iraqi government. The Iraqi government is paralyzed by this sectarian divisions and sectarian uh, political setup, which the American uh, uh, implemented in Iraq 2003 until now. This political system, which thrive on sectarian divisions and and uh, conflicts, and as long as we have this system, there is not going to be any future for Iraq. Iraq basically is divided without a declaration of divisions. Uh, this is what the American want, and they want to go make it worse. Uh, you cannot blame the Iraqi government for not being able to fight um, uh, ISIS. And at the same time, design, design, uh, de deny them the weaponry which they paid for in the first place, and the American has not uh, de delivered. So, what's the point of sending few airplanes with Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and the Emirates to bombard Syria and to bombard uh, uh, other places, while actually they do not have troops on the ground to uh, to fight seriously? Uh, the terrorist groups. All this saga about the threat of terrorism in the Middle East, which was brought in the Middle East in the first place by the Americans and their allies in the area. In the area. And even uh, Joe Biden uh, had to... Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to go back uh, to uh, Mr. Kadem. Now, even though uh, President Barack Obama has ruled out uh, combat troops, how much uh, could the slow movement of these airstrikes uh, pave the way for the deployment of uh, U.S. Uh, troops on Iraqi soil? Well, taking any option off the table is a mistake from a policy perspective. Uh, there is no question about that. Ruling out uh, any kind of options, uh, military options, uh, would send a message to the other side uh, that uh, is not a positive message uh, that, that you, you want to send uh, about your capabilities and your um, and how determined you are, 
But back to your um, question, uh, I think um, it is uh, it cripples the policy. I mean, it cripples the strategy. Let's say um, you you really do need to have a um, sustained military. Uh, uh, com campaign, uh, sustained airstrikes, and also, as the um, Mr. Jawad said, and he is quite right about um, much of what he said, I, I have nothing to, to disagree with, uh, maybe except for the intentions of the Americans. I don't believe that the Americans do want to make things work, worse for Iraq, even though they might end up making it worse than Iraq, but I don't think it's intentional. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think that uh, without all of the components of a strategy, including the uh, capable ground forces, you are not going to do much for ISIS. ISIS will continue to expand. Uh, and in that sense, uh, I think Mr. Jawad is, is quite correct. Um, the, the, the results will not be as good as we hope them to be. All right, Abbas Kadhim from the US and Sabah Jawad from London, thank you both for contributing to this.